Welcome back, everybody, to Ark Survival Ascendant. I'm an old guy, Gaming and in this episode, we're going to go do the Northeast Cave on our Thylakaleo. I've already done this cave once, uh, but we're going to do it again on cam camera. Camera? Yeah, camera. Uh, we're going to take Bobcat with us. Um, and he's got, I, I recently found this uh, blueprint, or a blueprint, rather, for this pretty decent saddle. Uh, so we're taking that. I don't want to take my Ascendant Torch blueprint with me. I just want to take the Ascendant Torch itself. So let's put that back in there. Uh, let's see, what else are we doing? We're bringing uh, some extra fiber. I've got leather armor on because we can repair that easily within the cave itself. Uh, we're doing 100 sniper rounds uh, with the fabricated sniper rifle. All of my equipment that I have here is not my best pieces. It's like my second, third best pieces in case, you know, the, the worst happens. And yeah, so I think we're ready to go. We got antidote here. I have my um, ot otter with me. So we'll see if we can pick up a couple of, you know, two or three of the uh, artifacts while we're down there. So we'll bring a few more back with us. And I think we're ready to go. We got medical brew, food, and yeah, let's do this. Um, actually, you know what we should do, though? I don't think we'll need it, but let's bring some stew. We'll bring some enduro stew. Hmm, if anything, that cave would get cold, but I, I don't think we're going to have a problem with cold. I mean, we've got like freaking 62 fortitude, and, and hide's pretty good for cold, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, Yeah, I, I think that's really all we probably need. Uh, in case we do end up you know, having to do a little bit of melee, this will certainly help. Okay, so let's um, take off. There isn't really a whole lot. Oh, actually, there is one thing I do want to update you guys on. Uh, I did go ahead and build the stairwell down to the river here that I had uh, told you I was going to do. So it's pretty basic. It's just a basic stone stairwell uh, all the way down. Uh, but it's so much nicer now to get down to the river and back up from it uh, using this now. And as you can see, I put a couple of... Um, uh, plant species act. Oh, shit. Looks like that one on the left is a little crooked, but you know what? Whatever. I'm not going to redo it. Uh, so we have a couple of plant species X2 turrets just in case, you know, baddies try and come up the stairs. They'll get thumped pretty good by those. And uh, yeah, what else? I've got, um, four female, uh, Argies with, uh, mutations. Uh, so these four... Argent's right there. <laughs> this game. Uh, that's another bug that the game has. So so the birds appear to be on the ceiling, but they're actually right here. So you have to punch them to get them to come back down. Um, but each one of these four birds are females, and they all have the father's uh, two-point health mutation. So if you look in the at the chart on the right-hand side up at the top there, You'll see it says 37 points, but then it has a 2 in the next bracket. Um, so they all have that health mutation. So what I've done is I've... Uh, all of these are just kind of spare birds at the moment. Um, and so these birds are now going to take their place. And we'll start stacking mutations because this this is the father that originally had that, uh, that mutation. Um, I'm not super serious about doing a lot of breeding on Argentavis. My Argies are already really good as they are, but, you know, we're, we're doing a little bit of it. What we're really focusing on um, is really Therizinos. Uh, so these guys have another imprint. Oh, shit. They want, they want another imprint in 37 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, that's not, that's not enough time. I'm glad I remember to check that. Okay, so what I'll probably do is cut the camera, do the imprint on these, and then bring you guys back uh, when we're ready to go um, on the berries all of these berries here are um, base berries based upon the wild father stats and so I've got a bunch of uh, actually I've got a bunch of uh, taming eggs or sorry leveling eggs in here all of these uh, are eggs that I'm gonna hatch and then eat uh, with our new caving berry army, which is over here. So all of these berries are now cave dinos. They all have uh, the same stats as their parents. And um, Soldier 2 and Berry Moore and Soldier 1, which is back at the sea base, those are all pretty much fully leveled. Uh, Soldier 2 has over 800 melee damage, so he is just absolutely badass. 
And the plan is to use the berries in pretty much all the other caves, except for the northeast. The northeast... I don't know what the hell keeps making that noise. I think there's something stuck inside the... Tr is that you? I was hearing that noise earlier and I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. I think... Yeah, I think it was this ra raptor here. <laughs> Here, let's eat the bird. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so these are all our cave dinos. And I still need to level Soldier four, uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, they just uh, recently grew up. They're all fully imprinted. And uh, that's what I'm going to be using those leveling eggs for when the time comes. Um, okay, is that? I think that's all I was going to get you guys updated on at the moment. So, um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna kind of do some stuff around the base, I guess. Wait till these guys are ready for their second imprint. Um, and then these two mothers will join, I think, this mother, um, as we continue to build our Theory army. Now, if I look at my spreadsheet here, let me bring that up real quick. Um, we've got a decent we've got a really good health stat on on the mother uh 45 points which is su su super good uh 46 stamina which doesn't matter a whole lot and then we have a 39 damage stat which is decent it's not the absolute best but it certainly isn't the worst either but i'm still kind of keeping my eye out for um uh uh wild therizinos just to see if we can get a little bit better uh, damage stat. But I'm starting the line with these anyways, and then if we do find one, we can just breed it into the line. Uh, but, I, but you know, we're getting started with the... Ah, shit. Uh, looks like I forgot to collect some babies. Damn it, Jim. Too many things to try and remember. Son of a beach. And, and, it's, and to make matters worse, I just made the mother kill her own babies. Isn't that terrible? Absolutely terrible. All right, you know what? Turn mating off on you for now until I'm ready to to do that. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, sometimes that happens. So you just it's too much for me to try and keep track of. Sometimes. Anyway, um, so these two mothers here have the good stamina and damage stat, but they don't have the health stat. So I'm still trying to breathe this mother's health stat on onto the baby uh, to a baby. Once that's done, then we're finished with this mother, and then we use these two to get the stamina and the damage stat onto the baby. Uh, so we're still working on trying to get a base pair gone. We haven't quite accomplished that yet. You guys, get off the ceiling. Quit doing that shit. You're not supposed to be up there. Get down. There you go. Uh, all right, guys. So, yeah, I'll bring you back. Um, I'll probably actually just meet you at the cave. I'm just going to take the theory, um, or not the theory, I'm sorry, the Thilo Cross Country. And I'll meet you guys up at the Northeast Cave, which is right up here. Or no, sorry, right up here. And we'll do that cave uh, here in just a little bit. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, imprinting is done and we're ready to go. Uh, I know that I don't need to imprint those dinos because they're breeders. But the reason that I do that is because... Um, I might, you know, once I'm finished with them for breeding, I might want to actually use them. So might as well imprint them. It's not a big deal to do that other than time and sometimes some kibble. But I got tons of kibble, so not a big deal. Um, if you did not have the binoculars and you weren't recording the stats uh, in a spreadsheet like I'm doing, then you would not want to do that if, if our, all you're going off of is the, um, you know, the, the level data itself. But I record all that in a spreadsheet, plus I can always see what the original score was with the binoculars, so it doesn't really matter. So if you've ever heard anybody say you should never imprint uh, your breeding dinos, that's only true if you don't have access to their original information. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is you don't, you don't want to imprint them for the purpose of breeding because the imprint buffs do not carry over to the, uh, to the babies. So... Let's see what you are. You're a level 40. I uh, have yet to come across a level 150 Rex. Hasn't happened yet in this entire playthrough. In fact, I have uh, noticed that it seems like 
um, it seems like 150s are pretty damn rare in general. Uh, at least, uh, you know, at least from what I've seen, I, I've, I've found a few, you know, we like, we got a 150 Sabre and a 150 Daton. Um, I'm still looking for a high level theory too, and you're not it. Just take your, your head off there. Get out of the way. Move, 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 move. Or die. That works too. Um, so anyway, yeah. Main reason, like I said, I do is just so that we have the, um, you know, I, I have the imprint buffs on it if I decide to actually use the dino after I'm finished with, you know, breeding with it. So that's the deal, yo. Okay. Let's, uh, let me actually look at the map here for a second. We're heading up to... The northeast cave. Actually, we're on a direct line with it where we are. So, yeah, let's just keep going this way. I just love the Thylo, man. It's it's just one of the most enjoyable critters to, uh, to ride in this game. They can climb up, you know, the sheer side of a cliff. They can jump. They can take fall damage. They're powerful. Uh, just really really like this team and I'm still disappointed you know that we can't that we can't take it into any of the caves except for the northeast cave but it is what it is our berries are gonna do really really well in those caves just because they're so strong in and of themselves but I still would have preferred uh, you know to do the thylo if, if it would have worked worked out that way uh, we got an alpha here and a nice blue raptor. That raptor probably would have been, might have been, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, mutated. <laughs> Quit thinking about it for a second. Can't really get a headshot off on it because it's just right up in my business the whole time. All right, um, reasonably decent crossbow, I guess. I do now have a, um, a grinder, so I'm throwing most of this stuff in the, in the grinder. I keep about, you know, I don't know, three or four of the highest level of each item, and then everything else just goes to the grinder. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? We got a, a point, uh, we're putting that into melee. And, uh, cool. Okay. Let's continue on here. Let me look at the map again because I probably got off track a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we did. Actually, yeah, you know what? Let's just go up the river because the river will lead us right where we need to go. And uh, the Thilo actually swims pretty fast in the water, too. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. It's just an impressive creature all the way around. I just wish they'd make the hitbox a little more realistic on it, you know? Love the blue on that theory. But we're basically killing every Therizina we come across um, in order to encourage, you know, higher spawns, of course. That is why we do that. But, yeah, uh, very good creature in the water, too. You could, theoretically, if you wanted to, I suppose, because, you know, you can shoot from the back of these, right? You could spec some of its points into auction and actually use it as a water creature, sort of kind of like... Um, yeah, what the hell, we'll check this. Uh, when I played on Fjorder, I use actually used the Andrew Sarkis. I can grind that up. Eh, I just don't need the rest of that stuff. Uh, the Andrew Sarkis was actually a really good water creature. But you did have to be careful because it, you know, it had oxygen, so... There was a, at least one time that I can think of that I kind of forgot that and... Unfortunately, it drowned because <laughs> I was all the way at the bottom of the sea with it. But, um, yeah, really good. You know, of course, the Androsarchus had that armored, um, you know, saddle, too, which was just amazing. Level 45, another blue-bellied Therizino. All right, let's continue.
Getting this guy into the cave is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. It, you, it can be done, because I've done it, but it's not, uh, it's not super easy. You have to kind of jump it in. You have, you have to, like, kind of continually jump and, like, almost vibrate it in, in in a couple of spots. It's just, it's really weird, but I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about once we get there. There's an explorer note. It's kind of far away, though. Um, I'm trying to remember if I got all the explorer notes on Cardo Isle. You guys want to mix it up, huh? Be the last thing you do, bitches. All right, what level are you? 35. Of course you are. Compies? You guys are so dumb. Oh, look. There's a dino that's uh, 50 times my size. Let's go attack it. Got the orange on that Rex. It's a shit level, though. Of course it is. I really like that orange color, though. That's cool looking. Alright, we'll cross over right here. We wait for our stamina to come back first. Let's do it. Uh, oh shit, Alpha. Mm, I think we can outrun it. <laughs> Hope so. We could probably kill it, but there's too many other sharks around too. Well, and I, I don't know what uh, what level it is either. I have my shadows turned down. That's why we can see for miles under the water. When I'm doing stuff in the water, though, I turn them up so it's legit. It's kind of immersion breaking, really, you know, to be able to see this well under the water anyway. At least for me, it is. If we could lure that alpha to the shore, we could probably kill it. Uh, that other red shark, I don't think is an alpha. I think it's just a red shark. Nope, it is. It's a level 20 alpha. And that's a level 15 alpha. The other one's just further away. Um, yeah, why don't we actually see if we can lure that guy to the shore and kill him. Um, at the shore, or at least close to it. There's another one way over there, too. That's a 60. Oh, shit. There's, there's one there, too. A 140 alpha. Oh, my God. That is scary. Yeah, we don't want a piece of that. Uh, but we can see if we can get this one, though. Looks like a couple of them are coming. Let's actually draw them over here. Just so they are encouraged to come all the way up onto the shore. Are you guys still chasing me? Sort of. All right. Come on over here, boys. I got a little present for you. It's called a hook claw. Right in your gizzard. I don't know. Do sharks have gizzards? Probably not. Okay, let's see how close up to the shore they'll come. Get a bleed going on him. Get out of here. Gotta watch the health and stamina, of course. Okay, let's get some stam back. We could uh, do this. Soften it up a little more. Okay, 
we're doing pretty good on stamina and health. Just keep that bleed going. We'll definitely have to do a, a heal before we go into the cave. All right, we got one. Oh, no, you know what? I think that was just a normal shark, actually. Did, was it? Oh, shit. I need her. <laughs> okay, let's take a break. Um, Yeah, that was just a normal shark, because I don't see a, an alpha a thingy in here. This guy's... Uh, um, no, he was... He was a normal, right? I think so. Okay, good. We got the alpha level 20. Let's, uh... Get back up here. Uh, there was another shark chasing us. I don't know if it was an alpha or a normal. Get our stamina back. That's just a normal shark. See, so like I said, you know, if you if you leveled some oxygen on these creatures, um, they would wouldn't make a half bad water creature. They really wouldn't. Okay, so uh, all right, we didn't get anything super super duper good, but that's decent stuff. Okay, I'm not, I don't think I want to mess with that 145 alpha. We could do it, but uh, let's just get moving here. <laughs> There's Stock Gaming's uh, taming pin over there. Oh, I don't think I told you guys this. Um, I am no longer playing on on Stock's server. I, I have my own server now. Um, it really just came down to... I needed the ability to have full control over the server uh, for the sake of the series. Um, we had a situation where Stock had to go do something in real life and he was gone for several hours and the uh, server needed an update. So I basically lost like, you know, six, seven hours of recording time on a day that I had taken off from work uh, around Thanksgiving, planning on recording, you know, for most of the day. And that's not his fault at all. He had to do what he had to do. I completely get that. But, um, you know, after that happened, plus, you know, I, I, I've kind of had to kind of bug him a lot for just, you know, changing settings. And, you know, we were trying to get the, the imprinting and all that to work. And I just decided, you know, it's, it's going to be better for me to just have my own server. Uh, but what he did for me um, is that he made a, a, a download of, of the world and get, you know, send it to me on Dropbox. So that way I was able to load the world and not lose any of my progress. So super appreciate him. Um, he's a good guy just in general. So if you guys haven't already checked out Stock Gaming, uh, please do so. He's he's doing an ARC series too, and he does some live streaming too. So kudos to him. He's a good dude. All right. Anyway, uh, back to this. I guess we might as well go see what's going on here. Nothing of interest. We'll take those. I guess we'll take that, but I don't need that stuff. Uh, where'd my cat go? What? Where the hell did he go? Oh, <laughs> he's up there. <laughs> I was like, oh, what did he? What happened? Oh man, with all the shit that happens in this game, it would not have surprised me if he would have just vanished and left me on Carnal Island. By the way. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Okay. So, um, how much meat do we have? Oh, yeah, we got lots of meat. Okay. Let's go ahead and get inside the cave first, and then we'll we'll get the cat healed up before we start the action. Um, I am... I wouldn't mind doing a quick sweep, though, to see if uh, there are any potentially decent level Rexes on the island. Sit down. Oh, 
Oh, look, an Alpha Rex. Haven't seen one of those oh, in about 15 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I over in general, I don't mind the Alphas. Um, because, you know, you get good loot and good XP. But they do seem to be a little bit over the top, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. Good grief. Um, hell, I don't even know what I got off that thing. Especially in the early game, man. That it's, it's just dangerous to all get out with that many alphas running around all over the place. But, okay, there's a Rex. Level 20. Come on, game. What the hell? I think we, you know, we we had that, um, that's an Alpha Karna. We had that 130 or 35 Rex that I tamed, you know, that ended up being Chomp. I think that's what its level was. I don't even remember now. Um, And that's literally the highest level Rex I have, I have seen on this map. Uh, I guess we could kill him. I'm just gonna have a little bit longer heal now, but he could he could potentially give us something good. <laughs> that bag was from something else. Uh do we got anything super good in here new? We got the arm, so yeah, I don't know. It, uh, nothing that's really standing out, so I'm going to do finish my circle around the island looking for more level 20 Rexes first. I'm not planning on, at this point anyways, I'm not planning on raising a Rex army, but it's still a possibility, so I would like to have... Um, you know, a pair of, of really high level Rex is ready to go. What I would do is I would probably breed them up to, you know, base level and then just, you know, sit on them until I decided if I actually, you know, needed them or not. But I just don't have any, anything in the yard right now, Rex wise, that's worthy of raising a boss army. They're just there for the eggs. All right, we got a couple Rexy Poos here. A 20. See, I told you, level 20. A 20 and, um, and a 10. <laughs> Look at the colors on that one, though, man. So cool looking. Purple and teal. If I cared a little bit more about colors, I would tame that one and just breed its colors, but I don't care that much about it. Hey, I, I think it's cool when you see a, a really colorful dino like that, but it's not something that is that big of a deal to me. I'd much rather have a dino with good stats. Uh, all right. Well, I think it's time for us to head into the cave. Where the hell is that thing at? I always forget. Lose where it's at. I think it's... Is it up here? It's somewhere right around in here. There it is. Okay. It's really dark in the first part of this cave. So what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to put this on the saddle. And so basically, you can get the thylo to here. Here. And then from here, it's. You have to kind of. Do this. To get past this point. It works, trust me, because I've done it before, but. Oh, God. Really? 
Uh, we did it. Okay. <laughs> See? I mean, what a major pain in the ass that is. Unbelievable. But, I mean, it's doable. You just have to... You have to vibrate through. Okay, so, once we go through this water and come out the other side, we will have enemies. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to heal this guy up. So, once I have him at full health, I'll bring you guys back and we will proceed. Alright, guys, we are ready to rock and roll. Let's do this. So, we jump down into this pool. We swim down this way. And follow the... Yeah, this way. Follow the tulips. Except for, I can't see what the hell's going on. Uh, come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then we come up this way. Jeez, uh, man. Okay. We need to go... We came... Uh, do we go through here instead? Hold on a sec. Oh, this is frustrating. Okay. Uh, th that's where we came down because we got all of our bags. Okay. I've only done this once, so... I thought what we did is we came down through here. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and then around the corner here. Okay, why the hell can't I get out of the water? I'm stuck on something and I can't see what the hell's going on. Come on, Ark. You're killing me, man. You're absolutely killing me. My guy's stuck on something. I don't want to dismount because there's a bat right there. There, finally. So this is the beginning of the cave with the artifact of the cunning, whatever, whatever artifacts in here. I don't, I don't remember. Okay, let's do this. Uh, we, we should not have any problem whatsoever with this cave because when I did it the first time, I was not on an in, an imprinted thylo. Now we're on an imprinted one that's fully leveled or pretty close to fully leveled so this should not be difficult at all at least I'm not expecting it to be just jump over that little gap there okay and a little bit larger gap right there come here you bastard all right, so we got mega rabies. We're gonna take the antidote, and then that'll give us immunity for uh, three minutes or so. Okay, took care of him. Little jump over that gap there. Camera angle's a little bit weird in here in third person, just because of the kind of tight quarters. And I think, yeah, it's really hard to see, but I think there's a gap there. And we got a drop here too. Okay, let's kill these bats first before we do the drop. Yeah, do not come into this cave without antidote. For sure. Okay. Um, the cat has 55, 56. That's going up a little bit, but I'm not really too worried about it. Let's see what we get here. Okay. Uh, Arthur saddle. Yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> this is pretty nice, though. I don't think I've even ever tamed an Arthoplura. I don't remember ever taming one. I think I was in a tribe once where somebody else did, and I kind of took it for a spin, but 
I mean, what are they good for? I, I guess they would be good for PvP, for wrecking enemy armor and stuff. Not sure what use they would be for PvE, though. We'll go through here. Got some scorpions. Now, at this point, if we wanted to, we could just jump down, but there's a bunch of monsters down there, so I'd rather just take it, you know, go down the path the normal way. That way we're... That is a uh, jacked up Megalania, I think. And probably a good thing, too, because we don't want him jumping on us. Level 150. Wow, he's tough. Woo. Did we get... Uh, yeah. We're going to need that for one of the bosses, the Megalania Toxin. Hmm. Wow, it's a good thing he was kind of screwed up, or he might have dropped right on our noggin. All right. Uh... Guess we just jump across that. The lighting is a little weird in here because now, see, everything is like super dark right here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a skylight or something on that portion. I'm not sure. Um, if I was interested in taming a Megalania, 150 would have been awesome, but I wasn't really thinking about doing that, nor prepared to do it. Of course, being prepared to do it would simply be a matter of staying on the Thylo and just having it tank while you knocked it out. Something maybe to, to keep in mind for the next time we come in here. Uh, I, I'm actually <laughs> watching for them now because this is the cave that they're in and they, they might be in other caves too but this is kind of like supposed to be their main cave okay down with you our health is pretty good This is where we get rushed by the whole big group of them. Okay. Uh, we got Mega Rabies again, so let's take another antidote. There's the artifact in there. Uh, there is an explorer note over here, so let's actually. I'm just gonna see if I can. Oh, I guess that's not the explorer note. Or is it? No, it's a little further down. Yeah, it's over here. Let's grab it really quick. Much like the island's other large theropods, Megalosaurus noctodominus is an aggressive cave carnivore that should not be taken lightly. Unlike most of the other theropods, it is a primarily nocturnal creature. As dawn approaches, Megalosaurus begins looking for a secluded place to spend the day sleeping in relative safety. Conversely, if disturbed during the day, Megalosaurus is significantly more sluggish. Either way, however, its primary combat tactic is to bite onto its target, then lock its jaws shut in an iron grip. Only larger creatures can hope to break free once Megalosaurus locks its jaw. The creature then proceeds to gnaw on its prey until death. It's a terrifying, grisly spectacle to watch, and a formidable tactic for a tribe to employ against more nimble opponents. While Megalosaurus is not the most powerful theropod, 
it is still highly sought after by night raiders. Due to its nocturnal nature, Megalosaurus becomes much more familiar. Well, this seals it. Mm, sorry Just about that. Just when I thought I'd made some sense of the notes I took while visiting the painted sharks, I spotted the nail in the proverbial coffin. Megalosaurus. There we go. Much like the island's other life. So, if you guys are interested in what this says, um, just pause the screen and read that. But yeah, Megalosaurus. Very dangerous dinos in caves. I don't know how to turn her off. <laughs> Let's at least turn her down. Um, I normally I like to listen to what she has to say, but we already kind of did that. I wanted to grab that uh, and kill the last batch of dinos there, you know, so we got the XP boost. All right, I think we should be safe to go in here and grab artifact of the devourer. Okay. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay down here for a little bit. Because what we can do is um, go into our otter's inventory, put that in there, and then we can get another one. Uh, plus, I already have one back at the base, too. So, um, you know, that way we'll have a few. But it'll still be worth coming back in here for the loot. And potentially, if we wanted to even try and um tame a megalania i wonder if you can get a megalania in the lava cave because one advantage that they have is they can climb straight up walls too just like the thylo can um but i i don't know if their hitbox is is narrower or not i'm not really sure so anyways guys all right so yeah what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna hang out here uh oh wait we do have another explorer note okay we'll grab that at the very end I'm going to hang out here and see if I can grab a couple more artifacts uh, to take back with me since we have the otter. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and officially end the episode here. Uh, the tentative plan for the next episode, I think, is going to be to run the lava cave. And, and we'll have to, <coughs> excuse me, we'll have to take uh, our berries with us. A couple berries, probably a male and a female for the mate boost is my tentative plan. Um, I have to think about that, though, because there's kind of some tricky jumps and stuff in there. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm sure we would do fine with just a single baryonyx in there, and we, that's probably what we need to do just because of the nature of that cave. Uh, so, yeah, let's tentatively plan on doing that for the next episode. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya. <laughs> Look at the, uh, the otters cuddling with me. Isn't that cute? Um, okay, so for anybody that's interested, the episode is now over, so you can go now. But if you want, hang out and check out and see what this explorer has to say. Mesopithecus amicifer is an omnivorous monkey species, primarily inhabiting the island's jungles. It is smaller than a human, but can scurry about the same speed. It does not appear to be aggressive, unlike its relative, the Gigantopithecus but is rather very shy towards humans, likely due to their much larger size and lack of hairy exterior. Due to their skittish nature, they can be difficult to tame. They can be hand-fed if you are patient, but stick too close to them for too long, and they'll get spooked and run away. A common pet, Mesopithecus is very easy to keep fed. It will eat nearly any fruit harvested on the island. Mesopithecus is most often used as a social companion, as it cannot carry enough to be a beast of burden, is not large enough to be ridden, and is not particularly good for combat. It is, however, quite effective at vocally warning of incoming intruders and pelting them with copious amounts of tossed fecal matter. Nomadic tribes have also managed to teach Mesopithecus to open locked doors when pillaging.